Tomorrow live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Happy Monday. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. If you're new to the program, welcome. You may not know that every Monday we have the distinct pleasure of welcoming one of the greatest college football analysts in all the land from ESPN. He is a BYU national champion, Trevor Maddich, back on the show for another Maddich Monday. And Trevor, I'm just looking at the statistics alone from this BYU at Arkansas game. Improbable, unbelievable, probably doesn't begin to explain how the Cougars won this game. But in your opinion, how did BYU pull this thing off in Fayetteville? It seems like a minor miracle, doesn't, doesn't it? But like most miracles, it had to do a lot with what BYU did. I mean, you talk about statistics. Arkansas had 424 total yards, BYU 281. You just look at that and you would think that they would have been run out of the building out there. But what they ended up doing was after weathering that initial storm where Arkansas went up 14 to nothing, BYU played relatively cleanly and they forced a lot of mistakes. And that was the big difference in this game. Penalties turnovers, mistakes, missed assignments, and sacks. So many big plays for BYU in this one. And down 14-0, certainly it, it could have been tough to come back. You, it's a 14-0 run. It's a BYU 17-0 run. It's an Arkansas 17-0 run. It's a BYU 17-0 run. It was an incredible swing there. What was the biggest play in the game to you? To me, the biggest play was the, uh, the trick play touchdown, where, you know, they threw a double pass off to the right, then – touchdown pass to the running back going up the opposite sideline. The reason is that kind of kick-started BYU's belief, and that stopped Arkansas's momentum. And the thing is, a lot of people think that if you have to do a trick play like that, maybe nothing else is working. Well, there's another way to look at that. Trick plays like that don't work unless the defense is overloading something. I don't want to say the word cheating, but unless they're unsound with their assignments. That's why those kinds of plays worked. So not only did it stop their momentum, start momentum for BYU. It also forced Arkansas to cover the entire field. And so I thought that play was the spark that got the whole thing going. ESPN's Trevor Maddish on BYU Sports Nation. Trevor, what did this specific win teach you about this BYU football team in 2023? Resilience and belief. I mean, they, there, there was no reason for Arkansas to not run BYU out of the building with the way they started. With, you know, start out with a with the lead. They've got the momentum. Uh, they seem to be the more physical team, and BYU wasn't going to have it. And that's what this showed me because the Cougars started making plays. And it's not that they were consistently awesome all the way through. They weren't. But when it came time to make big plays, BYU made them. If you just look at the defense, for example, Arkansas moved the ball kind of at will. But in key moments, they got pressure on the quarterback. They sacked the quarterback with the defensive line a lot of times. And on, on defense, when Arkansas kept on getting first down after first down, most of those weren't third down conversions. Most of those were bigger plays on first or second down because when it came to third down, they only converted two of 13 third down opportunities. That means that BYU defense – when Arkansas was moving the ball, when they had the opportunity to get them off the field on third down, they did every time except for two. And so th those kinds of things, rising up to the moment and making the play in the moment when they weren't dominating really anything else is what this BYU team kind of identified itself as here. Now, they want to dominate everywhere else, and they got better this week than they did than they were in the first two weeks. But I, I learned that this team is resilient, and then when it's time to make a play, they make the play. Certainly winning at Arkansas may not have been in the cards for everybody, myself included. This is an upset win. This is a bonus win on the schedule. BYU ahead of expectation, at least for me. And it seems like a lot of Cougar fans. So does this affect how you feel uh, BYU can perform this season? Is the expectation higher now for the Cougars? No, my expectation is still the same. You know, if they, if they get to a bowl game, it'll be a terrific year. If they, if they win seven games, even eight, it'll be still a terrific year because the schedule all of a sudden gets pretty tough. But at the same time, you see BYU rising each week. They're getting a little better. And if they continue to do that and get to the point to where they're really maximizing their capability, there's no reason to think BYU couldn't achieve a lot more than most people expected coming into the season. And so right now I'm thinking, okay, I still need to see certain things get better in order for them to be able to compete at the mid to higher levels of the Big 12. But you see those things starting to gel in certain ways. So I want to see those continue to gel.
Now, Trevor, you mentioned the Big 12 at the bottom doesn't look as maybe tough as we thought it was when the season began. Iowa State is, frankly, in shambles. We're not sure about West Virginia still. Oklahoma State just got blown out by South Alabama, 33-7. to So where do you see BYU right now? If you were to put the Big 12 power rankings together of all 14 teams, where would you put BYU at this juncture? At this juncture, I'd put them probably right below Texas Tech. Okay. Is about where I'd put them. Maybe TCU. So I would put them right kind of in the middle of the Big 12 with a chance to rise a little bit. You know, this, this opener against Kansas will tell them a lot because Kansas is one of the better teams in the Big 12. I don't consider them up there with the Texas and Oklahoma in that group, but they're very, very good. But you're right, the Big 12 really struggled this last week, and if it's not an overreaction to say that those teams are going to continue to struggle, then when you look at teams like Texas Tech that has a phenomenal offense and, and can keep up with scoring with pretty much anybody, and you look at TCU, who the impression that people have is that loss to Colorado, but the truth of it is this TCU's team is really good. I mean, they lost a lot of guys to the NFL off of last year's team that made the national championship game, but in the transfer portal, they restocked pretty well. They just didn't come together very well in the game that everybody was watching, that Colorado game. So I think that TCU is a tough team as well. But see, BYU is now kind of rising up into the realm of that level of teams with the ability to, to really belong there. And in order to do it, there's a couple of things that need to happen. First and foremost, the offensive line needs to continue to get better. The offensive line showed some signs of improvement against Arkansas. And if they continue to grow, then that's the most important thing for this team. And then also the chemistry between quarterback and receiver. Keaton Slovis made some fantastic plays. Receiver made some fantastic catches. But it was still just a 52% completion rate. And when you can't run the ball, you need to complete a lot more than that. So these are things that BYU needs to improve in order to reach some of these goals. Yeah, the way BYU won was not super clean or pretty, but welcome to the era of Power 5 football. You just have to win the game. Each week's going to be, this is not the whack in the Mountain West where sometimes BYU's putting up 50 and just blowing out fools. I don't know that we're going to see that very often. Um, the way that BYU won was impressive. You brought up some of those numbers. I want to talk about the run game because we've talked about it the last couple of weeks. 45-yard touchdown run by L.J. Martin. Amazing. Outside of that, 30 carries for 32 yards. So the run game, still trying to figure it out. But, hey, BYU won. I'd rather be talking about this in a win than a loss, Trevor. Right. Now, uh, and talking about it that way is good. I think BYU deserves the credit for good things that they did. But also, I think as a fan, it's important to understand the totality of what happened in this game. Arkansas had 14 penalties for 125 yards. They had two turnovers. BYU only had one. And in key moments, Arkansas didn't make the play BYU did. Arkansas's offensive line is, is a shambles, to use a word that you used a couple of minutes ago. And they've been trying to rotate guys in to figure out who can play offensive line for them. And that showed up because BYU, uh, in important moments, dominated their offensive line, forced a lot of penalties from that offensive line, got sacks against that offensive line. But when they face a really good offensive line, they're going to need more from the offense. And so, you know, yes, this is a great win. And, and, in this era of Power 5 football, survive in advance. You don't need to impress people by blowing people out. Just win the game, right? But in order to be able to win consistently, you need to have something to hang your hat on. And if again, if you look at the offense, BYU right now, you could say what they have to hang their hat on is an occasional phenomenal catch because that's what they had. Isaac Rex would have had the catch of the game had it not been for Chase Roberts having a catch for a touchdown that ended up number one on ESPN's uh, top 10 list. I mean, it was phenomenal. Mm. But other than that, there wasn't much consistency. And so I'm really happy with this win. Survive in advance. Get the victory. But you've got to have something to hang your hat on when things are going poorly. And so, you know, this is where they need to improve on some of these things. Now, Trevor, before we get to a question about uh, one specific Cougar in the NFL, Puka Nakua, we do need to ask you your opinion on how BYU matches up with Kansas. Where would the Cougars have an advantage against the Jayhawks in their Big 12 opener? I think BYU would have an advantage in the same way that they had an advantage over Arkansas. They would have to have that advantage in discipline and playing mistake-free. Okay. Because the, the the offense for Kansas is legit. Their quarterback, Jalen Daniels, uh, is a, uh, a 
kind of a dark horse Heisman candidate, a dual threat who's one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the country. The offensive scheme that they run is extraordinarily difficult to prepare for because they use all kinds of different options and deceptions that that give people fits. Their defense right now is, I believe, second. It's one of the one of the best in the Big 12 at fewest yards allowed per game. And some of that can be skewed by your initial opponents. But at the same time, the, the defense of Arkansas, or excuse me, Kansas, is experienced and they've got a lot of talent there. So this is a game that BYU will need to go on the road and they'll need to win with discipline and they'll need to win with, with execution. Because from a, a talent standpoint, it's hard to see on that Kansas team a place where you can say, yeah, we're going to go get him right there. We can, we can overrun him right there. Kansas is pretty good. When you look at what Puka Nakua did, uh, <clears throat> it's amazing. We thought he'd be good and he'd have a shot. We didn't think he'd be number one in the NFL in catches through two games and number two in yards. <laughs> 15 for 147 yesterday. He's really playing the Cooper Cup role and taking it very seriously. He is, and, and he's doing it in such a physical way. I mean, he'll catch the ball down the field, but he catches a lot of passes at or near the line of scrimmage, and the defense will swarm him hit him and he'll drive through like a running back and get yards after the catch. So he got beat up a little bit in, in this game against the 49ers. They are one of the best and most physical defenses in the NFL. But what impresses me is that in the first game, you know, they, they weren't sure the defense wasn't sure where the Rams would go with Cooper cup out. And it was Puka Nakua uh, and, you know, and, you know, Tutu Atwell, et cetera. But Puka was really the focal point. So here come the 49ers and they're able to game plan for him now. And they're swarming Puka. And Puka is just physically driving through those tackles. So you can get a lot of catches, but not a lot of yards. He's got both. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation for another loaded Maddich Monday. Trevor, we appreciate the insight. Here's to BYU going 1-0 in Big 12 play. Fingers crossed for that. I hear you there. Thanks, guys.